Hey, what's going on and welcome to the Sir Ty Experience, the place where dreams live. Today's experience will be in fashion. We have a fashion mogul, Mr. <laughs> Raphael Cox from Project Runway. I want to welcome you to the show. What's going on, man? How you doing? Thank you, Sir Ty. I'm good. I'm just trying to hang in there. <laughs> awesome. Well, I, I want to thank you, first of all, for being a guest on the show. Thank you for your time. We know that he's extremely busy these days. So, so what's been going on with you, man? Um, just my usual sewing, mm. trying to take over the world. Um, <laughs> just really working hard on my latest collection for my mm. Redemption Fashion Show. Mm. Um, and just, you know, continue to drive my brand and stay optimistic and, you know, seek out every opportunity there is for me. Awesome. Well, we want to take a little journey. How was uh, your childhood coming up and where did you grow up? Oh, my childhood was very um, free, liberating. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in, well, first I was born in New Mexico. Okay. My father was in the military, so we traveled mm -hmm. um, around the world, literally. Um, so I grew up, uh, born in New Mexico, grew up in California mm -hmm. most of my, you know, childhood. Um, then when I was in sixth grade, 1995, we moved to Atlanta. Okay. Um, and it was a huge change because, you know, growing up in California, you have friends of so many different yeah. um, diversities. Mm -hmm. It's just so many different cultures. You learn so much about people mm -hmm. um, from different walks of life. And coming to Atlanta, where it's predominantly <laughs> black, you know, you learn what hip hop is, rap music, <laughs> yeah, you know. And yeah. it's like, um, where's the cranberries? You know? <laughs> oh, my um, God. Yeah, so it was just a huge change because I was used to just dealing with you know, just different type of people. And then mm. coming to Atlanta, it was like, oh, okay. The whole energy yeah. shifted. Like, it was like entering into a new realm of the world or something. But mm. um, still, great childhood. I, don't, I didn't really have any, you know, major problems or issues or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, besides, you know, being mistreated because I was light-skinned. But <laughs> that's a joke. But, um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it was free verse. Loving, mm. great like childhood that I can remember. Okay, I know you say your father was in the military. Did that, let's say, strict upbringing have any, um, I guess, I don't say damper, but any effect on your, you know, personality characteristics? Because you seem very, you know, free and easy going yeah. versus someone who's okay, do this, walk yeah. this way. He wasn't that type. I know some military um, fathers and or mothers, they can be very militant at home yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. um, he wasn't very strict. Um, he was pretty much just a normal dad. Like he didn't he didn't bring that home with okay. him. You know, that's what he did for yeah. work, you know, but outside of that, no, I didn't um I don't remember there was a I mean, I was kinda messy, so <laughs> I, I didn't clean up my room. <laughs> yeah. You know, but, and I've met other kids who had yeah. military, you know, parents and it's a huge difference from what I had. Yeah. And I okay. I could attest to that I'm a military father oh, okay. my, to my kids, but I, I had to learn the, the ability to, yeah. you know, balance because yeah. being in the military and then coming home is two different things. You don't yeah. want to have your children as soldiers. So that's, right. I'm, gl I'm glad he did that yeah. for you to have you really have a childhood, you know, to right. enjoy. So what were your, let's say, inspirations in fashion or who did you look up to um, growing up? Um, growing up, I, I would die every time I saw images of Naomi Campbell and <laughs> Tyra Banks. Um, mm. They were the only ones that really, I guess, um, combined the black, mm -hmm. you know, African-American as well as the art of yeah. fashion. Um, I didn't really know of too many African-American designers when I was younger, so they were the beacons that yeah. I was like, oh, she's in Versace, oh my gosh, she's <laughs> yeah. doing Calvin Klein, or, yeah. you know, Victoria's Secret. So it's like, whenever I would see images of them in fashion, that inspired me mm -hmm. to think, oh, I can do it too. And or there were people in that realm, mm -hmm. in that art form, that were of the same culture that I was. Gotcha. Um, so I didn't really have too many African-American designers. I guess that's why I really strive hard now mm -hmm. to really be that example exactly. or that epitome for yeah. a young African-American mm -hmm. designer coming up to really have a name and a person that yeah. they can identify with that is African-American and a high fashion designer. Yeah. And, not and just doing, doing it big. Right, doing right. It big, yeah. But not just no urban, you know, <laughs> jeans, <laughs> right, <Fubu, laughs> apple bottom, yeah. you know, but an actual brand, yeah. actual like recognizable name that is appreciated, exactly. that is a well put together Mm -hmm. product um, so I just would die when I would see images of them and I would always Google images of Naomi and Tyra and 
they just really inspired me. Awesome. So, so many journeys in life. You could have been a doctor, a lawyer, or a, you know, physician. What sparked your interest to say, okay, I want to be in fashion? Well, it's funny because <laughs> for some reason I thought I would be a history education teacher. Okay. <laughs> uh, because I always did love learning things about people okay. and just studying people. Um, which then also made me realize that I wanted to be a psychologist, yeah. <laughs> but I still want to be a psychologist yeah. um, because I love picking people's brain, dissecting it, and putting mm -hmm. you know the puzzles together, why people do okay. what it is they do. Um, but it actually all started when I went to Alabama A&M University after mm -hmm. I graduated from high school, okay. um, and I was doing history education, mm -hmm. um, and I, was, I wouldn't say I was bored. I was intrigued a little <laughs> bit, but... Um, I noticed I was always late to everything because I was spending yeah. so much time getting dressed. Gotcha. So I had to do right. <laughs> I'll be out, I'll be right. So I had to do a sit-in um, internship at an elementary school, mm -hmm. um, as far as part of the opening part of the um, program. So I was going to this elementary school always late, always mm -hmm. late. Some days not going. <laughs> Very good. You know, so I didn't really pay any attention to the whole aspect of fashion until mm -hmm. one of the, the kids at the school. Mm -hmm. He came up to me and said, how do you come up with these concoctions for your outfits? Wow. And I was like, what? I was like, you third grade, <laughs> yeah, what's concoctions? Yeah. Right. Spell it. <laughs> Spell it. Right. <laughs> so once he said that to me, um, the teacher politely came over and was like, yeah, <laughs> tone it down a little bit. So wow. I then realized like, wow, I'm putting so much time into this. Mm. People are starting to take heed to it. Yeah. And obviously it's an effect mm. and it's affecting people. Yeah. So I was like, maybe I should really explore fashion. Mm. So that summer, we got out um, for summer break. Um, two weeks, I was just sitting on the couch, just staring at TV, being mm. fat. And um, <laughs> AIU, American Intercontinental University, mm. came on advertising their fashion design program. Wow. And I was like, they was like, call this 8100 number. And I was like, yeah. why not? Called it, yeah. um, set an appointment, went to side of campus, did all the paperwork. And I was enrolled two weeks out of being wow. from school. Yeah. You know, for during the summer break, I went straight back into school. Who knew? And so yeah. here we are now. Awesome. So for the viewers out there, could you tell us like what is your main focus? Is it women? Is it win, uh, men? Excuse me. Or is it, you know, high fashion? Is it everyday people? Like, could you kind of give us um, a definite on that? I would like to say um, that I, it's funny because in this city, in Atlanta, mm -hmm. a lot of designers, they always seek out the celebrities they're waiting for that opportunity to dress yeah. a celebrity. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I was talking to a friend and I was like, I don't really think I want to explore the opportunities of celebrity. I want to explore the opportunities of the everyday woman. Yeah. Um, so I would say that I get the greatest enjoyment just knowing that, you know, Rebecca from, you know, Norcross yeah. just bought my blouse, wow. you know, or Susan in Decatur, yeah. she's wearing my skirt. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, I think that's the most exciting thing to when you have an everyday woman that can conceive your mm -hmm. vision yeah. as an artist in fashion mm -hmm. and they can say, oh, I can pair that with this top or that jacket or this and this. And I think that's the greatest reward. So I, I love to do women's and men's clothes. And at my Redemption Fashion Show, there yeah. will be men's and women's clothes. Hmm. And there will be some sample sizes. I know you're kind of small. <laughs> I'm willing to put it on. Yes, right, yes. Right, right. And then so, if we'll press pause. There. Let me tell you something. I was really, um, I don't say nervous, but when I was booking him, I'm like, I have to, I got to come correct because yeah. this is like the fashion yeah, icon. Exactly. So, yeah, the step, you did good. You did good. Thank you. <laughs> I try. I try. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. But yeah, I just, I just love thinking of the everyday person and making mm -hmm. close of that person. Awesome. You know, and... If it's high fashion, I, I always strive to be high fashion. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when I'm designing, I have to kind of say, okay, dummy that down. Like, oh. she really will go in <laughs> looking like she just came from Couture Paris week. You know, so Going I always to think, Walmart. Right, no, right, right. right. <laughs> yeah. So I always think of the best way to conceive high fashion into the everyday look. Mm -hmm. So that's something I really strive to do in all my collections. Awesome. So tell us, um, after we take this break, uh, about the Project Runway. Cool. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with the Surtai Experience. And welcome back to the Surtai Experience. We're here with Raphael Cox of Project Runway. So we were talking about how you entered in, how it all started. Can you please take us through that journey of being on the Project Runway? Um, it's, it's such a funny story because... Uh, to be honest, I actually sent in all of my documentation to Project Runway mm -hmm. late, wow. <laughs> after the deadline. Okay. Um, but before that, 
Um, the interesting thing was is that I had been a finalist on every fashion mm. reality show there was. Really? I had tried out for everything, and all of the first times that I tried out for anything, I was was a finalist for wow. it. Um, from Bravo's, the mm. fashion show that okay. they had, um, I was a finalist for that, the second season. Um, NBC's, the fashion star that they had, I was a finalist for that, the first season. Wow. And then for Project Runway, I was a finalist for that. <laughs> I was really just like gang banged by all of them, yeah, you yeah. know, with nothing to show for it. But um, I just, I don't know what it was, but I just... I just, I guess I wouldn't give up. And yeah. I just was so persistent in trying yeah. out. And um, Project Runway was just kind of like a random last minute thing. I think yeah. I talked to my sister about it. Yeah. And I was like, mm, well, okay, whatever. Yeah. So I had my, me and my sister created a home video. And, yeah. um, you know, I was harassing her about creating it. So we did it. And then I was just like, well, we'll just send it off and see what happens. Like, it's like one of those opportunities where you don't really yeah. think about it. Yeah. You kind of just let the universe take hold of it and, and just, just let it flow. Let it flow. Yeah. Um, so by the time, <laughs> by the time I sent everything out, it was like overnighted for mm. the deadline day. Wow. Um, and it didn't get there until the next day. Wow. So, um, but after, you know, that I was like, well, they're probably not gonna pick me because everything's late. Mm -hmm. So I want to say like a, the next day I got a call, random call from LA. Hey, can you send us more pictures? Can you wow. send us this? Can you send us that? And I was like, mm, sure, <laughs> okay. You know, I'm thinking they do this to everybody. Mm. So then they just, another email, can you um, send us this? Um, who is this in this picture? What is yeah. this? And he was just very inquisitive. So yeah. I was like, okay, whatever, send them that too. Mm. Then I got an email like, hey, you're a semifinalist. Wow. And you need to be in Miami by next week. And it was a Thursday that they sent me this. Wow. I had to be in Miami that Friday. OMG. So I went into the whole creative indie artist <laughs> thing like, oh, I could drive down there and just sleep in the car and yeah. eat crackers. Yeah, I don't yeah. have no money. We're going to make it happen. Right, yeah. right, right. We're going to make it happen. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just the most random thing. Like, I really went into shock. Like, what am I going to do? Yeah. How am I, you know, and then I went to look up flights. Flights were 450. <sighs> hotel was 450 because uh -huh. I had to be down there for three days. Wow. So, hotel was 450. That's mm -hmm. a what? $900 already, mm -hmm. not including food, not including travel. Like, Taxi yeah, fare, you know, whatever. so yeah. I just was like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to do this. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And the funny thing is being on the other shows as a finalist, mm -hmm. Project Runway was the only one that made you pay for really? your own travel expenses to the semi final round. Mm -hmm. um, all the other shows, they covered that. Because I was actually like, they didn't cover that right, for no. you to get there. So that's when I was like, this show is cheap. You know, I was like, what? what you can just, no, just take right, I was like, this, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm good, I'm good. Like, I'll like, make it. Do you not know who I am? Like, <laughs> yes. I've been on every, you know, fashion video. I was like, I'm a finest for everybody. Like, good, they yeah. find me everywhere. You need, you need to Google me. Right, Google yeah, me. Very good, right. yeah. But, um... So luckily, I met a friend mm -hmm. uh, who provided everything for me. So I flew down to Miami. Good, good friend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, but no, he uh, flew me down there, put mm -hmm. like everything, paid for all the expenses. Awesome. And so um, the first day was a semifinal round where you met with um, the judges mm -hmm. to really show your collection more yeah. in depth interview. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was some previous um, designers who were the judges, and yeah. I mean, instantly walked in. You know, did my spill. Mm -hmm was myself, mm -hmm. um, and they loved me. It was, yeah. yes, all across yeah. the board, awesome, and awesome. Um, smooth sailing from there. And then the next day, you had to meet with the casting director, mm -hmm. and that was basically sitting down in front of the camera just spilling your, mm -hmm. all your beans. Yeah. Um, and from there, I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. And the funny thing was, by the time I finished that interview, mm -hmm. I had got a call from L.A. again wow. for NBC's The Fashion Star. And they were saying, hey, we're flying you out to L.A. on Tuesday. Oh, indeed. So I didn't leave from Miami until that Sunday. So that means basically I was going to be flying out for another show. And I was like, oh, I don't know what I want to do. I was like, what show should I do? Mm -hmm. Because Project Runway was going to notify us if we made the show that Monday. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, I don't want to waste their money. I don't yeah. want them to come out and think they yeah. want me. And I don't, yeah. I don't really want to be there. Mm -hmm. So that Monday, Project Runway called. I was a finalist. Wow. They're flying me to New York, and I was like, "Oh shit! Like, what am I gonna do?" Yeah. So they didn't fly you to New York. Yeah, they flew right, 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 right. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> to, in contact with somebody. Somebody check on their budget. <laughs> right. No, they did fly okay. me to New York. All right. Okay. But they did. Uh, but once again, that trip to LA mm -hmm. for the fashion star was that Tuesday. So I ended up going. I was like, I'll just take it as a vacation. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna kick my feet up. <laughs> like, look, I'm booked. I'm yeah, like on yeah. all these shows. You know, like y'all yeah. want me, but I don't want y'all. Yeah. Um, but. It was a great experience going out there, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, just being on Project Run was a great experience, and um, it was one of those things that I, a show that I watched when I was mm -hmm. in college, and 
it was like that beacon or just something you dream of doing. And I never really thought I would do it and yeah. or be on the show. Yeah. Um, because a lot of me and my other designer friends, we always talked about it. Like, would you try out? No. Would you try mm -hmm. out? No. Mm -hmm. And then I finally did it. Smooth selling, first go round. And it was just like, it was surreal. But yeah. it was a dream come true. So how was it like every day waking up and you're seeing people and they're, you know, sewing and you yeah. hear the cameras? Like, how was that? that it was... Um, it was like, it's almost, the funny thing is they kind of just throw you in there. Wow. And they don't give you no forewarning. There's no disclaimer. Yeah. There's no like, hey, we're going to be in your face. Yeah. You're mic even when you're in the bathroom. <laughs> wow. No. Yeah. It was just like, okay, we're going to mic you. No, go to work. Wow. And it was like, it was really one of those things to where I guess they just assumed we mm -hmm. watched the show. Yeah. So we knew the format. Mm -hmm. We knew the whole, you know, systematic way that they yeah. did everything. Yeah. And it, it's funny because they really gave us no direction. It was just kind of mm -hmm. like, oh, you guys know what it's like. So go ahead. Action. Action. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? I was like, wow. Okay. But, um, I mean, you just kind of got used to it. And the people were very diverse. Mm -hmm. I know some of the people there never really lived with a black person, yeah. let alone new one. Yeah. I had one girl tell me, um, she was from um, Colorado, and she told mm. me that there was a guy, a black guy in her mm. city, yeah. um, named Jason, but they called him Black, because he was the only black person there. So don't get me wrong, she's very sweet. She's yeah. one of my good friends from the show. But just being honest. Just, yeah, she's just being yeah. honest. And that just tells you, shows you what... Where we are. Where we still. are, still, yeah. but also what type of you know, people I was around. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really one of those things to where you're not around people that you know and or know yeah. anything about you. Hmm. So mm -hmm. is it with, as fashion, I know it can get kind of catty. So was it like people stealing threads and materials from each other <laughs> or give me this and, you um, know, no. trying to sabotage for... Everybody's <laughs> kind of like independent. I think no. like it's it's really like everybody kind of sticks to what they know and okay. they're in their little zone. There was nobody vicious there or backstabbing like that. Oh, that's good. You know, because... Um, that would be a huge, you know, problem. I think somebody's pattern went missing one time, mm. but <laughs> you can't blame it on anybody. Even though there's serious, right? Yeah, I can't find this. Right, yeah. even though there's cameras rolling twenty four mm. seven, like you still don't know where it went. Yeah. Okay. Cool. But yeah, no vicious people. That's good. So, being on the show, did you think that helped sharpen your skills? You know, hey, being like just there and focusing on sewing, focusing on being creative, that they help boost your creativity or your, your fashion design? Um, I would say it definitely um, taught me basically just how time really works yeah, and time yeah. constraints. Because, mm -hmm. you know, when you're sewing at home, working on something for a client, mm -hmm. you can say, oh, I'm going to finish it later. I'm about to go watch TV. <laughs> yeah. My favorite show about to come on. But It'll it's be like there. being there, mm -hmm. it really taught me, like, basically how to really focus and work with time yeah. management and really buckle down and say, oh, this project is due by mm -hmm. tomorrow at 3. Yeah. Let me work ahead instead of working behind. Deadline. So I really took that as a great note to always work ahead mm -hmm. because you never know what mishaps can happen where you can finish it or be rushing to finish mm -hmm. it and then it not fit the client yeah. or you know you finished it early and then you still have some time to really completely finish it mm -hmm. to better you know appearance wise you know because a lot of people when it comes to fashion they don't know anything about it mm -hmm. they always look for what's wrong yeah so I always taught myself to work ahead and really make sure the presentation is there okay so what what are some of your pet peeves in fashion like what you see you um, going out just like to the mall and you see someone walk walk by and it's like why did they do that um i don't to be honest i'm not as judgmental when it comes to fashion i mean i i, I can see something but like oh that's so awful like, why <laughs> i should do that but yeah. i don't i always just take people for what they are uh -huh. you know like i if somebody asks me i will tell them like oh you need to ugh. <laughs> like, no, my girl, no. But yeah. I don't really I don't really sit there and say, oh, I hate this, I hate that, I hate that. Mm -hmm. The other thing I will say is that I hate when people wear things that they know is not them. Exactly. Meaning, if you know you're a certain type of girl and you have a certain type of look, you should dress accordingly to the way you look and your personality. Listen, that's, that's wisdom. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I always say, <laughs> that really annoys me the most is when mm -hmm. I meet someone, I say, you know what, you're such like this, but you look like mm -hmm. this. Wow. So I would say someone who doesn't know themselves mm -hmm. and know how to convey their personal style and or image through mm -hmm. clothing yeah. really annoys me. Wow. On that note, we'll be right back and we'll learn more about his life after the show. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. And welcome back to the Certai Experience. Talking it up with my boy, Raphael. Mm -hmm. So tell us about leaving the show, life after mm -hmm. Project Runway. 
Um, life after, I guess, being on a reality show <laughs> is like... You are back in reality. Yeah. So you're confused on what is reality. <laughs> like, where's the camera? Right. So it's like you, um, it was really hard, to be mm. honest, because you have to really reprogram yourself to think that you're normal, mm. almost, per se, mm. if that's what you want to call it. Um, but I would say that it was the hardest thing was, was like, I guess, just transitioning into, you know, people really knowing who you um, are. Because, yeah. you know, when you're there, you have no form of communication with anybody. You have mm. no internet. You have no money. You yeah. have no identity. Yeah. It's almost like, I guess that's why when people say they pledge fraternities or sororities mm-hmm. and everybody starts out with a clean slate, which yeah. is the number, yeah. that's so everybody has the same experience. And so that's what really is the same thing. Okay. They really take away your identity and all your materialistic things and materials and they strip you down and all you have is your talent to yeah. survive on, I guess. Gotcha. Um, but it was hard just, you know, balancing coming back into the real world mm-hmm. and Re- remembering who I was before yeah. this show, what's yeah. new for me after yeah. this show, what to look forward to, what yeah. not to look forward to, who am I, yeah. what do I want to do now, where am I going, right. yeah. where am I going? <laughs> and that I have this new spotlight on yeah. me, I have a new name now, yeah. like I have a you new adjective yeah. that goes in front of me, you exactly. know, new title. Yeah. So it's like, it's really hard because you you have all these things now. It's, yeah. so it's like all the stuff you've been working for, mm-hmm. or just thinking about and striving to have, you now have that moment to where you can achieve it a little bit more easier than Mm. before um so i would say the hardest thing was just really capitalizing on the opportunity but also remembering who it was i was before the Mm. show and who i am now and how can i merge all those together i'm talking about those open doors we know that you've been in some magazines or just some drops could you talk about you know what type of magazines you've been in yeah, um, I luckily I before the show mm-hmm. and after the show I always had great press opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the local publications I was in Control Magazine. Okay. Um, they did a write up on me. Um, I was in Jador Magazine. Okay. They did a write up on me as well. And um, I always love working with B Magazine mm-hmm. as well. Um, and it's just I honestly just blessed because people have always contacted me, want to yeah. follow up with me about things I was working on, do feature stories on mm-hmm. me, feature my collection. Yeah. Um, and I've always just tried to strive and keep my name out there and just working towards something or mm-hmm. keep a project going. Um, and I just, you know, like lately, I guess one of the highlights of this year so far, it's mm-hmm. only been, what's well, it's February. Yeah. Um, I have Fantasia wear one of my dresses Stop. from my spring summer awesome. 2013 collection. And you know, people can say what they want to say about her. I don't really care. <laughs> you know, like she can sing. Yeah. She can sing, yeah. and to be honest, she's. You know, it's like it's having somebody like that where one of your pieces that mm-hmm. you admire. Yeah. You know, that has a distinctive yeah. talent mm-hmm. that you know will go far. Exactly. Um, it meant so much to me, and I, I would say that's my highlight. So thus far, mm-hmm. um, for having one of the, somebody that I really admire yeah. wear my clothes. Yeah. Okay, so for people out there, you said you mentioned Fantasia. Who else has you know store power that has donned one of your your gowns or one of your, um, your fashion? I did a lot of work with Dondria, mm-hmm. um, and she was actually probably one of the first celebrities that I work with. Yeah. Um, really sweet girl. Like we met at it's funny how we met because we mm-hmm. met at a photo shoot. I, the photographer who was shooting her, I um, apparently left something at his studio because mm. we shot before the shoot. Okay. So I went back up there just go get it. He's like, hey. And I was like, hi. <laughs> yeah. He's like, calm down. What's up? Yeah. He's like, uh, what are you doing? I was like, well, I came to get what I left. Yeah. Well, um, are you free today? I was like, yeah. What do you want? <laughs> yeah. You want mm. something. So he's like, well, we're shooting Dondria and, you know, the stylist, you know, we want to use. Um, it's kind of running late. You know, he's not preparing. I was like, how much time do I have? <laughs> yeah, we're going to work this out. Right. You know. So um, I went home, grabbed up all the garments. <laughs> yeah. You know, luckily she was sample size. So yeah. I grabbed up all the pieces, got accessories, pulled shoes, and, yeah. you know, shot her. And that was like one of my first times really styling a celebrity, working with a celebrity. Okay. Um, and her and her mom, they always reach out to me when she's mm. on projects. Um, I was also had, you know, um, work with Candy Bruce from Real Housewives of Atlanta. Okay. Um, I did a, a costume for her um, mm-hmm. when she performed at um, a choreographer, Victor Jackson. Yeah. Um, he had a little Christmas party, so I did some work with her. Um, and then also I've had work, um, one of my dresses won by Dee Woods. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the time when, um, you know, the whole little trio group was hot, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, did, uh, Diddy Dirty Money, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. had Kalina, mm-hmm. she, um, we actually did a photo shoot with her and she wore some of my stuff. So I was really, um, blessed and pleased mm-hmm. to have worked with all women that kind of are very free, like myself. Yeah. 
Um, you know, I think with being a designer or just someone in an art, you always wish to work with people that are similar yeah. to you. And I will say that most of the women that have worn my clothes are similar to me as a person who mm -hmm. I'm a designer, what I stand for. So okay. I, I feel very blessed and thankful for it. Okay, so tell us about Redemption, the fashion show that's coming up. Yes. And it is your baby. It's yes. yours. So tell us a little bit about that. Um, redemption, redemption, redemption. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> where to begin? <laughs> um, <laughs> Right. <laughs> Redemption was a, sh um, it's my first fashion show, first mm -hmm. off, um, but um, it was always something that I wanted mm -hmm. to have. Mm -hmm. um, and being that it's Atlanta, it's not like a New York yeah. where there's fashion weeks, there's fashion shows all the time. And yeah. I, I was sitting at home and I was like, oh, it's so quiet in this city. It's nothing yeah. going on. It's no fun. There's yeah. no fashion. Yeah. There's no nothing. <laughs> and I was like, well, get up and do something. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I should. But I'm scared. <laughs> you know, so it's like you think about mm. doing things like that independently. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, where am I gonna get the money from? Yeah, yeah. I gotta make all these clothes. Yeah. Are people gonna come? Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I realized I was like, let's not think about all that. Yeah. Let's just do a show. Yeah. Let's just put it all out there. Mm -hmm. Let's put it on the table, and just feed it to them. Like this is yeah. it. You want it? Now eat it. No, <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. So, um, I called one of my friends and was like, "Hey, I want to do a show." He's like, "What are you gonna call it?" And I was like, "Hmm, I don't know." I was yeah. like, "That's another know, huge right? question mark." Yeah. It's like, "What do you call something theme like yeah. and all that decorum type mm. stuff?" So, it just came to I was like redemption. I was like, "I'm starting over. I'm mm. starting new. Yeah. It's a new year. Yeah. I want to start a new chapter in my life. Mm. I want to take my brand to another level. Exactly. I want to work with new clients. Yeah. I want to really focus on the brand and building it into mm. a brand." Mm. Um, and just really push myself. And I was like, if I'm going to do this show, it's a first time show. It's mm -hmm. my first time showing, yeah. you know, my own yeah, collection exactly. at a show instead of doing bigger shows with other designers. So I was like, redemption seems right. It's redeeming, yeah. starting over, rebirth. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the same thing I decided to do with the promotional materials mm -hmm. was be naked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it's like when you're born <laughs> into this world, you're naked. Yeah. So I was like, how can I be reborn if I'm not naked? Yeah. <laughs> So um, I just decided to do that, and that was the whole conversation piece about everybody. It's like, oh my god, are you naked? And he is for real. Right. You see the fly, like it, it's like, oh, all right. Yeah. And I had some of my friends was like, um, so how much of you did they Photoshop? And I was like, what you trying to say? Yeah, yeah. You know, this is like, me, this is my body. Right, this yeah. is my body. Yeah. Like I've been working hard at it, but yeah. um, it was just funny the feedback I was getting from people. Like they didn't believe it was me. Did they wow. put my head on somebody's really? body? And I was like, yeah. look, the body is just average. I'm about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, it's a little curvy, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, but I was like, come on now. But um, yeah. yeah, I just I just really want to go there. And mm -hmm. with the promotional images, I really want to go there. Same yeah. thing with the show, the ambience. I really want it to be a show. I want yeah. I want to take Atlanta to the place where it's like, it, we're excited about fashion. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times, you know, we meet people from other cities mm -hmm. like, oh, you live in Atlanta, yeah. it's fashion, really? Yeah. You know, and I, I, want, I want it to just open the envelope and, and the say, bar. hey, let's raise the bar. Yeah. I'm going to have my own show. I'm going to do it. I, there's always going to be critics there. Mm -hmm. Always, oh, you could have this, you could have that. Blah, blah, blah. Say what I you don't mean. care. No. It's on the table. You're going to eat no. it. No. And so that's what exactly I want to do. And luckily, I had a great host, uh, DJ Tracy Still from yeah. Hot 1079. Yeah. She's hosting it. And mm -hmm. um, she was just as daring as I was. Yeah. You know, I was <laughs> like, hey, we're going to be naked. She's okay, when? You know, I'm <laughs> yeah. like, okay, what time? Yeah. Like, so she was just as daring to do mm -hmm. it. And um, I couldn't ask for a better host. Yeah. Uh, she's beautiful. She has personality. She's yeah. a Scorpio. Yeah. Like myself. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I just I'm I just feel blessed, fortunate, and so excited mm -hmm. to starting this new venture, you yeah. know, for me personally as a designer as well as, you know, starting a new energy force here in Atlanta in the whole yeah. fashion scene. Cool, well, cool beans. I, I can't wait. Yeah, you're gonna be there, right? Yeah, I am. I'm, yeah. I'm we're gonna be there. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Um <laughs> Wow, so okay, tell our viewers because this show is basically about dreams visions and you know people starting and then also let's say yourself uh successful and established do you have any advice any um uh i guess golden nuggets that you can give to say hey do this i've learned this mm -hmm. stay with it if you can just speak to those um what i always say is just be nice yeah I always say because um, a lot of times my opportunities come from being nice mm -hmm. and saying thank you, saying the yes, please, no, mm -hmm. thank you, and um, you're welcome. Um, and that's how a lot of times has gotten me by. Um, I won't say any names, but there has been other people from Project Runway that um, have mm -hmm. been to the same places yeah. I have. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you how many people have came to me and said, like, 
you're so nice yeah compared to other people yeah. and you're gonna go so far mm-hmm. because you're so nice and yeah. you're not afraid to start over to start mm-hmm. anew and rebuild yeah. um so I always I always tell myself never think I'm too good to do anything good. and I think when you think that and you have that philosophy you'll never become vulnerable to where you're at that pivotal moment at your career mm-hmm. where you're at the top and you're so f- fearful of falling mm-hmm. down because at the at that moment if you always stay humble you always mm-hmm. remember what it felt like to be at the bottom yeah. you'll never forget it when wow. you're at the top that's good um, so that's something I always strive to be and I always tell people that's that's the best business advice you can really get at the end of the day is to make sure people always remember just how professional you were, how Mm -hmm. nice you were, how courteous you were, and just, you know, a great person and a great entity to work with. Okay. So my question to you would be, are you living your dream? Oh, that's a good question. Like, how much time we got? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, wow. You know, it's funny. I, uh, oh, this is so funny. I asked myself (laughs) that, I think, the other day. Really? I'm a mind reader. Right. <laughs> I think I, I, what was, I think I, I, I may have phrased the question different, but mm-hmm. I think I asked myself, um, I think I was like, am I, why, I think, oh, the question was, why am I doing this? Yeah. Why? Yeah. What, what is the goal here? Yeah. Because I get so wrapped, like doing this show, the redemption mm-hmm. show, and just working on collections. I'm yeah. always working, always going, always mm-hmm. going. And I was like, what are we going for? Yeah. Where are we going with this? Like, what yeah. are we doing? So, um, to piggyback off your question, um, I am in a place now Mm -hmm. where I'm happy. I see the goal. Mm -hmm. I'm realizing the vision. I'm realizing what it is I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to put the pieces together just to achieve the greater picture. I'm starting to see like, oh, that's that. That's why that happened. That's Mm -hmm. why this is happening. This is where we're going. Um, So I will honestly say in the place that I am now with Mm -hmm. just redemption, the show, Mm -hmm. um, the collection, um, the brand, Mm -hmm. you know, traveling, Presenting it to different mm. people that I would never meet. Yeah. Um, I will say that I'm very happy, very optimistic, and I am achieving my goals. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I wish nothing but success, mega success for thank you. you. Stay focused. And- Hi, this is designer Raphael Cox from Susan Island Project Runway, and I've just been interviewed by Sir Ty himself. Um, and this experience was great. Um, I love um, discussing, you know, my career path, um, just how I got to my destination of where I am now and where I'm going in the future. Uh, it's always great to give advice to people out there who are striving to be uh, designers or just a creative entity in the world. So I'm glad he asked me all the questions that he did because I love sharing how it is that I got to where I am. Um, if you have any more questions or want to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, you can do so. My website, website is Raphael Cox Designs. That's R-A-F-A-E-L-C-O-X Designs with an S. Also, my Instagram is Raphael Cox Designs. My Twitter is Raphael Cox Design, and my Facebook is Raphael Cox, and I hope to tweet you, Instagram you, and talk to you on Facebook. That was awesome! (laughs)